for both of us because the, the things that were being said, the um, some of the lies that were being peddled, you know, just the whole narrative around it, it's a very personal thing. Yes. But it was really, really difficult for us. Actually, at some point, we even separated. The situation was causing us so much stress that it was really impossible for mm. us to just be together yeah. at that time yeah. in a respectful way. Mm. And I think a lot of people are still angry that Zach and I are still together today, that we are happy. In fact, sometimes I, I get a message from someone who are just like, you know, I can just tell you're pretending to be happy and you know that you just, but you can just let go. I'm like, I'm literally not. Sometimes it's very easy to take the person that you're with for granted. Yeah. It's very easy because, you know, Umemzoya too, they're just always here mm -hmm. until you see how in a split second, this person, this family, could be over you know my fans and the people who follow me i know that they are not my friends and this is a, a fact i know that they are not my friends i know that they'll be there clapping and liking when something good happens to me but, but I when also something know, bad yeah, happens they'll also be the ones they are watching yes. and looking and not necessarily and being a silent follower because mm. they're not going to go out and start defending you like yes. oh i know murugi's character or whatever mm. so it's a very thin line between now you feel the need to come out and defend yourself yeah. and you just let it be mm. okay mm. i feel like sometimes when people go on tmi sometimes they get the vibe at it's like we are anti-men mm. even though we love men mm. but every day it is different messages somebody in an abusive relationship somebody who their baby daddy has left them somebody who is you know being cheated on yes. somebody who i'm just constantly seeing how much women go through and sometimes by the way it's not even the man's fault mm. sometimes it's like even you A very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS Rebuilding Series. My name is Lynn Googie. Now, today I get to host someone and I must say, even me myself, I had no idea that this woman is truly powerful and incredible. But I've sat across people in this show and I've asked them, who do you look up to? Who is this person that inspires you? And they've said Murugi. And if you remember, Rono was just here the other day and I asked her, why Murugi? And she said, because she's a girls girls and at this age i'm just beginning to realize how much a girls girl statement means because we truly need each other you know but also we are the people who will often bring each other down as they say women we are our worst enemies she's an incredible mom an entrepreneur i got a chance to wear her dress on the show and i was really hyped about it and for me what even researching about her and getting to interact with her has taught me is that we never truly know someone and they are dangerous to a one-sided conversation so i'm about to let her introduce herself so that she can tell us what areas of her life is she rebuilding right now what keeps her going because if it's there's someone who needed to have been broken right now it's this woman but she's standing tall she's doing incredible things and i feel that's what we need today on the show but before i do that you know i'm about to pay some bills so how about i talk to you about our partners at king's developers limited uh the property we are going to be focusing on today is vintage homes i call it a classic evolution and if you are looking at an apartment <coughs> facing the park then why don't you try them they are two bedrooms they have great views security serenity so get in touch with our people at kings and inquire and i always say you don't have to get something if you don't have the money right now but there's nothing wrong with manifesting great things for yourself and of course said i would not be letting my team be thanked at the end of the episode so Edgar Skola and Muga as Anteni Sana for all you do on the platform and of course Kevin and Sam for compiling this episode and making sure it reaches you guys right on time and the other people you don't get to see in front of the camera who make LNN an amazing network and now allow me to let this powerhouse a superwoman she just reminded me of diana rose when she came out and she did the whole happy birthday for beyonce i don't have flowers to give her right now but please allow me to let her introduce herself good morning morning how, how are you, are you? Okay, i am fine how are you i am so to be honest mm -hmm. i feel like i don't know i'm just really thrilled to have you here thank you on this show because oh. allow can i confess something confess 
I feel like I've been those people who would hear your name mm. and not want to know more mm. about you. And the more I do these authentic conversations, the more I realize how it's good to be honest. Mm. And I feel like I, 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 I judged you at some point. Yeah. I, I feel like most people judge celebrities or like influencers at some point. Because yeah. what you see, my voice is only one voice. Yes. But the voices of everyone about me are so much louder because there are a million of them. Yeah. So it's easy to do that. And by the way, I just see Chokhilivi bias. I understand. Yeah. I get it. No, I not in a way. I'm like, oh, Murugini, mm. but I just mm. feel like I'm those people who read one part of the script yeah. mm. and they never gave you mm. or they never dug deeper to really understand who you are. And mm. today I want to start by giving you your flowers. Thank I've you. heard people here say you are a girl's girl. Mm. People always say good and great things about you. Thank so you. for standing in the gap and empowering other women, mm. I just want to say thank you on behalf of other people who are watching this show right thank now. You. So since I've gotten that out of the way, hey, I think you've already yourself. done <laughs> so yeah. I don't even know what to say. But anyway, for yeah. those who don't know me, I am Murugi Muni. First name is Joanne, but everyone knows me online as Murugi Muni. I used to be Yami Mami, but yes. then I changed to Murugi Muni just to encompass the, the wholeness of yeah. who I am, besides yeah. just being a mom. Yeah. I am a content creator, a podcaster, a social media influencer, an entrepreneur. I am a mom, I am a wife, I am a sister, I am a daughter, yes. I am a woman. You are a powerhouse. I am a powerhouse, Own I guess. It. No, not case. Don't do that. No, you know, you know, for me, I always feel like, to me, you see, to other people, yeah. they judge me based off of, like, let's say, a broad societal spectrum. Mm. For me, I'm just me. Mm -hmm. But I love when people say, oh, you're a powerhouse, you're this huge thing. But I just try not to let it get to my head. Yeah. Because once it gets to your head, then you're like, how would a powerhouse respond to this? How would a powerhouse say oh, this? I love how that. would a powerhouse, whatever? Me, I'm just Murugi. And I think that's what helps me stay grounded. It helps yes. me maintain my um, integrity and my relatability yeah. because I'm just Murugi. Good. Yeah. That's beautiful, mm. you know? But I do know I'm powerful. Uh, and I do know fact, I'm amazing. Yes, Don't get the fact that, that you yeah. know, you know. Ah, that I know. Yes, and mm. you know you mm. have Homer and yes. you just said, Lynn, yeah, I'm a puller. Yeah, I'm a puller, of girl. I'm a puller. Because mm. I've been wanting to be here. It's like me, Lindo, Lynn, in Boca DM. When are you bringing me? No, but when are you having me? Then I replied, yes. the universe. Because exactly. I had Lydia mm. come here, mm. right? I, I love Lid. She's, I she's, love her, her, her energy is just contagious. We had a beautiful conversation. Yeah. Mm. And even people in the comment were like, clean, bring Murugi. But for me, mm. because I feel like I've been so closed, especially <coughs> when getting to understand you, yeah. I did. it's not that I did not want to reach out. Mm. I had the fear of reaching out. And then the universe did its thing. I feel like, okay, many people say that, like, about a fear of speaking to yes. me or reaching out to me. But I feel like most people, when they meet me, they're like, ah, Kumbes is just like a normal person, just like the rest of us. I it, really am. Yes, you I are. I really am. You yeah. are. Karibu mm. sana. Thank you. And thank you just for honoring, you know, this moment and coming to share your story. Thank and you. we are doing this series that is dear to my heart. It's dubbed Rebuilding. Mm. We are trying to rebuild so many things in our lives, being authentic, being honest with who we are, our ups and downs. So maybe to kickstart the conversation, what areas in your life are you rebuilding right now? I don't know if I would say I am rebuilding anything. Yeah. When I hear the word rebuilding, the first thing that comes to mind is that it's something that you had built mm -hmm. and then was destroyed yes. and now you're building it yeah. again. Yeah. But I, I, I actually don't think that there's anything in my life necessarily that has gone through that tra trajectory. Mm -hmm. For me, it's like life, you know, it's, it's like an ever flowing thing. Yes. There are ups, there are downs, there are ups, there are downs. There's no this one like there's, you're at the top. And then you go down yeah. and then now you come back to the top. Yeah. I don't I don't feel that way. It's mm -hmm. it, like seasons. I see it as seasons. Yeah. So like for example, um your body as a woman, mm -hmm. when you have children, it's in a different season. Yes. When your kids are five years old, they're in a different season. Yeah. You get pregnant again, your body's in a different season. Mm -hmm. Same thing with marriage. Yeah. There are seasons that are phenomenal, there are others that are not as phenomenal. But then when you when you now get back to the phenomenal, it's not necessarily that you rebuilt because mm -hmm. nothing was destroyed. Mm -hmm. It's just part of the seasons of life. I love that. Yeah, but I would say that um, what I am building, maybe yes. not rebuilding, building, building yeah. is um, I'm really working on building wealth at the moment oh, yeah? and not just having money because money I have, by the way, I may have money, but go. I want to build wealth. Wealth meaning something which even when I am asleep for three months, 
it's earning me money somehow, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. I can leave my children. I'm yeah. really interested in building a legacy that my children can be proud of, that mm -hmm. I can be proud of at the end of my life. Oh, that's powerful mm. because, you know, people see you and they see the great work that you're doing. You have, like right now, you have your own fashion label. Mm. You are doing amazing. But I've also realized mm. in this age of, I'm not sure, I don't love the word influencers because mm. I feel like it has been cheapened at some point. Yeah. Everyone is now an influencer. Mm. But for people who create impact, I see sometimes we get it wrong sometimes. Mm. We do not care about financial freedom. You get the money, get the house, get the cars, get your girl, get your boy, mm. and then things start crumbling down. Mm -hmm. And because you had not built something sustainable, you don't have a fallback plan. Exactly. And that yeah. actually is the, the biggest issue. I've, I read a lot of material about what influencers or content creators, yes. especially in the West, do when they have a platform that gives them influence. Mm -hmm. The idea is that you're not just necessarily using the platform to advertise today, advertising this brand, this brand, this brand, because you're putting money in their pockets. Yes. And of course, you're also earning some money. But how do you sustain that going forward? There was a day I was having a conversation with my husband and he told me, he's like, if Instagram shuts down tomorrow, where are you getting money? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, wow. So my income is dependent on these other people deciding. You can see the government having conversations about, oh, we want to ban TikTok. Yes. So imagine poor who their 100% of their earnings mm. are on TikTok. Mm -hmm. That's definitely a problem. And so that's why I started looking at, like, now how else can I diversify that? Yeah. The money you get, where can you invest it? How can you grow a... Uh, um, a place where you can tangibly sell products and services mm -hmm. outside of that social media platform because yeah. they are not reliable, by the way. Sometimes you wake up, then Instagram is down, and you're like, Guy, I do. Sanita, do. It's a problem. It's a problem. So it can't be the only one, mm. you know, that you're, you're looking at. And not to say that you can't then still buy the cars and the houses and whatnot, because even me, I really enjoy the good life. I love living and I love living my life out loud and proudly. Mm -hmm. And I will do those things, but it needs to be balanced out with, yeah. are you also saving? Are mm. you also investing? Are mm. you also building some, using the platform that you have for some other kind of like long-term yes. gain to yourself? How are you diversifying right now? So um, I run a couple of businesses outside my social media platform, yeah. one being Wild by Murugi, and that's um, the one that I am really focused on building at the moment mm -hmm. um, because I'm really passionate about clothing. I love dressing well. I love seeing women being confident and dressing well, especially plus size women, yes. because for too long, you go to, I don't know, some big fashion brand and it's like, okay, they have size 18 and 20, but, but is it cute? No. You know, no. it's like me, I want those ones which you are giving the size 8. It's like an but afterthought. That's the thing. It's like you'll just get a frumpy t-shirt, yes. like a big skirt. I don't know what kind of... Me, I'm like, no, we also want to dress beautifully. And for me, I really am passionate about that, about giving women the option mm -hmm. of being able to dress nice like that. Mm -hmm. Although it has been a learning curve because I've realized... A lot of plus size women aren't as confident yes. as I, I would hope they would be. So it takes some time for them to agree to like buy something short. You know, they'll come to the shop and they'll be like, ah, pana, mina takayo long sleeve. Yeah. Mina takayo inye ayonishi mgu. Mina yes. takayo. So I'm, I'm trying to get them to appreciate a different way of dressing. Mm. Um, so that's my main business. I also um, do some Airbnb as well. Oh, yeah? Um, yes, I do. It's, it's good work, I mean, but... It's not. It's more of those things which you just have there, and it just earns and earns and earns mm. and earns in the background. Mm -hmm. So it's a good way of just earning some passive income. Okay. Um, now business is going to dogo to dogo to empesa pass yes. to nini apa yeah. some rental apartments. Mm. Um, but the main focus for me for building right now mm. is wild. T talk to mm. me about the self-esteem part because mm. you've said something about being a plus size woman. Mm. Have you had moments in your life where you've had to struggle with self-esteem? Mm. How you look? or how clothes make you feel have you had those moments i definitely have yeah <laughs> in fact i feel like i don't know i feel like when people see me online because i dress how i want because i don't let my weight affect what i'm doing or what yes. i'm not doing people are just like wow you're so confident oh my gosh you're so confident guy me wish i could wear that i wish i could wear the hot pants or whatever mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that i don't feel insecure sometimes because i do sometimes i'm just like ah, guy, look at this arm yes. where are we flying to why yeah. does this arm where are, look we like, where are we going <laughs> you know, i have I'm the like, same issue yeah. with my arms like, where are we surely. going but one thing i realize yeah. is that Confidence is not necessarily, I don't feel anything about the way that I look and whatever, you know, whatever anyone says, I'm yes. immune. The truth is that no matter how confident you are, no matter how uh, bold and proud you are, mm. of course, if someone sends you a message and says, Guy, now, menona, you know, you should lose some weight, of course, you're going yeah. to feel a little bit bad. Yes. But what I feel I've always had is I believe in my worth. 
regardless of my body size, regardless of if I look in the mirror and I think, oh my God, yeah, I could lose some weight around my hips. Mm. It has no impact on me believing yes. that I am worthy of money, of love, of people's attention, of, you know, I don't know anything. Mm. I don't feel like I'm any less worthy than yeah. a slim person. Yeah. Um, and the journey has been up and, up down, and down, obviously. Although my parents tell me that even when I was young, I always just used to command the room. It's mm -hmm. just like, you know, and our guys would be like, wow, look at this chubby little confident yes. girl kind of thing. But for me, it's just, it's just like a part of me. It's like the way my toes look. It's just the way that they look. And the there's your nothing else looks, we can do about yeah. it. It's just like, now that's just the way that, that it is. Even though I have gone, like I try to lose weight, I'm trying to do this, whatever. Yeah. But even in that process of trying to do that, I at no point feel like now when I lose weight, that's when I will, you know, uh, reach out to these people. That's when I will go on this holiday. That's when I will wear this. No, I will do them right now. Yes. Because who has even told you you'll be alive when you, when you when you lose that weight? Now, who has even told you? Who has told you? And you do it for yourself, uh, not yeah. for other people. I definitely do it for myself. And I feel like that definitely emanates yes. in the way that I interact with people. Because if you... If you carry your, your, yourself in a way that says, oh my God, you, you are doing me such a big favor by dating me. You're doing me such a big favor by even inviting me here. Yeah. You're doing me such a big, no one is doing anyone a favor. Mm. A man will be attracted to you just because you're attractive. It doesn't mean that now it's because you're fat. Now he's just yes. said, oh, Acha too, uh, let yeah. me just date her. Nim no, date. you are attractive. And that's why a man would be attracted to you. And if yeah. he's not, it's fine. People have preferences, but everything has to be, it's, it's an individual journey, let mm. me say. It's an it doesn't hurt that my man likes thick babes. So, so <laughs> I mean, he's, yeah, it he doesn't he's, hurt. He's a thick yeah, he's always, exactly. So it's just yeah. like, too sour. don't do anything. Yeah. Too sour. You're just perfect. You know, but their affirmations are just a bonus for you because exactly. you already know them. I already know that. And yeah. even though there are some days I will wake up and I'll be like, just not feeling my best, my most confident. But mm. on days like that, I'm just like, this happens to everyone. Yes. Even skinny people can wake up and still not feel their most confident, mm. just, if, just even though they are, they are slim. I'll put on a nice outfit, I'll put on some makeup, and I'll feel cute. Yeah. And I'll go about my day. Because go. now, start to do. Imagine if by the time you lose weight, now you're 60. You've <laughs> lost your youth, age. money, your time. Great moments. It How? How is how, it going to help you? Yeah, but I wanna get. I want to personify the interview a mm, bit so mm, people can mm. have a greater understanding of who you are. Mm. But you've heard me. So before we go there, you've heard me mention Rono a bit. Mm, mm. She was here a week ago, and I saw she, and I watched her interview. You watched her, lovely. you know. And mm. since you're one of the people she really mm. looks up to, and knowing right now she's she's been through a lot. Mm. Uh, she's battling alcoholism, self sabotage. I also know you have a bit of history with that in your family mm. so if rono is watching so that we can just get it out of the way what would you want to tell her right now oh man oh this is one of those topics that <laughs> gets me really <laughs> emotional mm -hmm. so um yeah we do we have had a struggle with with addiction in our family yeah. um, my dad growing up was an alcoholic um and so that meant he was i mean he was financially available but emotionally he wasn't mm. physically most times that he, he wasn't and my sister is currently battling yes. addiction yeah. um i think many people they'll come on my instagram and they'll be like oh where is jesus girl we've not seen yes. her where is what she not? we've not seen her and i think it's been like about 10 years up and down mm. with her and when i see rono i really see my sister a lot and i think that's why i i when any time that i see like she's going through something online i will send her a message and encourage her because i have really seen how difficult it can be mm. And I think a lot of people who haven't had a face-to-face -face interaction where someone close to you is struggling with addiction, you really can't see. Because to you, you're just seeing this person. So you just stop drinking. Yes. So you just do make the right decisions. So you mm. just stop posting. Mm. But it really is not that easy. Mm. Addiction is a disease, let me tell you. These people are trying to stop. The same way you can tell yourself, oh, I want to lose weight, but bado nakula pizza, yes. unajipata umekula cookies. It's, exactly. Now it's the same, but now even chemically, your mind just needs that drug or needs that alcohol. Mm. So, um, I mean, we've been in that journey with my sister for a, a very long time. Um, she's actually in rehab right now. Oh. Uh, which is a good thing That's because at beautiful. least when she's in rehab, we know where she is, she's safe, she's taken care of, and yeah. she's working on herself. Mm -hmm. um, but to, to, I mean, to anyone who's struggling with addiction, I, whew, man, you're ngumu. I don't even, but I would say, I know you feel like you're a burden to society, and society makes you feel like you're a burden, mm. but 
hold on to the people who, who understand that even you, you're in that journey. And it is frustrating and it can be, it's very up and down. Mm -hmm. Someone is doing so well. You know, my sister, there are times when she's come out and it's been like a year and she's not taken any drugs, any alcohol. It just... She's yes. back in the streets, exactly. And you see, it can be so frustrating because you as her family, you're, mm. you know, bearing the burden financially. You're constantly worried about her. And then because my sister has been on social media, I'll always get messages from people saying, oh, I've seen your sister at this place. She mm. didn't look well. I've seen your sister here. But now there's nothing I can do because you see, adults are adults. I can't go and forcibly drag her out of that place, mm. you know. I can't go and force her to leave. The only way that she can stay in sobriety is if she decides she wants to change mm. and i mean as a family we are just we just have to do the best to maintain good boundaries but also be there for them yeah. when they need to mm. um but one thing i always tell her is that it's not too late it's not too late to change because sometimes i feel like when she comes out of the addiction she looks around and she's like her age mates have gotten married they have jobs they have kids they have you know whatever and for her it's just like okay Everyone has already left mm. me, you know, so what's the point of even trying? Yeah. But there's always value in trying and there's no such thing as being mm. too late to achieve your dreams or too late to reach your destiny because mm. there are people who even at 50, that's when they have become actresses and actors yes. and they still make it, you know. Mm. So just keep trying and keep doing the best that you can. And every day, instead of thinking, okay, I've been 10 years in addiction, now I need to aim for being 10 years in sobriety. Mm. Just think of one day, mm. just make it through today, only today sober and that's good enough tomorrow is another day yes. you live to fight you live to fight mm. but let me just quickly ask what does that do to the caregivers you know the people who are looking on the on because no one wants to see mm. their family members going through something like that you know it, it's it's so scary because mm. you don't even know whether next time they'll make it or they'll come back home you mm. don't know what the next call is going to be so mm. what does that do to the caregivers it is incredibly difficult mm. incredibly difficult i mean i've seen my mom um struggle through this my mom is a very prayerful woman yeah. and she actually runs a rehab center because of our past with addiction she yes. felt so led to um be part of this organization which she's now the ceo of it's called teen challenge kenya wow. yeah and she runs this rehab it's for um they have centers two centers for yes. men and one center for women mm. and um she basically helps and supports people who um their family members are in addiction and mm. people who are in addiction themselves mm. because it is difficult but it's like one of those difficult things which is just like sauta do i mean you really don't have an option mm. option one is now you just tell this person okay so we end up in the streets and then don't ever come back here but you can't live with yourself you can. but mm. sometimes it's like you get frustrated and like maybe you won't speak to her for like a month a month and a half we don't know where she is until someone says oh tulimona huku tulimona huko I would just say it's the grace of God, honestly, mm. that keeps us going. Mm. G waking up every day not knowing if she'll be alive, if she has eaten, if she's being taken advantage of or being abused somewhere, you know, how she's getting the, the drugs or the alcohol when she has no money. It can be really difficult, but mm. really it's just the grace of it's God. It's just the grace. Yeah, my mom is very prayerful and Aww. I think that's just the only reason why. Yes. Hey! Because it can be really challenging. Yeah. And of course, for example, if like financially, mutu. And let's say you've paid. And rehab, baby, is not cheap. No, it's not. Hey, it's not. Let me tell you, in this it's country, not. rehab is not cheap. Yeah. Imagine you've paid like 60K for somebody to be in rehab two months, three months. I love what okay. Tomorrow they're back on the streets. I mean, it's you can feel really bitter. Yeah. You can get really bitter. But yeah. I think God just extends grace because he knows that mm. people need it. Mm. He just knows that he needs yes. it. Because, I mean, uh, people who are struggling with addiction need love more than they need judgment. Mm. They really don't need. And that's why even when I see like Rono being attacked online, I'm like, I understand why people are angry. But I empathize more than I feel like, oh, yeah, by the way, why did you do this? Why are you mm. going to do this mm. and this and this? Mm. It's like I know how much more painful it is for her. When Kwanzaa, when she comes out and she's like, oh my God, I hurt this person, I hurt this person. Of course, she already feels ashamed. Mm. So why would people online now come and make her feel more ashamed, yes. more, you know, ostracized? It's like she already knows. She already, knows. She already is feeling it, mm. you know? So why make her feel even worse? So yeah. I really... I mean, I really hope in her journey that she's able to keep going. Mm. I have loved watching her, yeah. getting her health together yeah. and she what. It's encouraging. And I believe that my sister will yes. also have a 
positive yes. story like yeah, that as both well. will both will someday pray, both so. will you mm. know but thanks for that i know rono also needed that and mm. i'm also happy that these are things you tell her mm. on the side but yeah. let's talk about murugi now you know growing mm. up mm. you've uh, extensively spoken about your mom yeah. and you've also mentioned something about your dad so as trying to understand the family dynamics what kind of family did you grow into this is the moment i sit back and let you walk us through your story because i've also known you've been such a dope <coughs> single mm. mom you mm. know you have gotten into this marriage it's incredible the ups and the downs of it and now you're still here mm. still thriving still shining yeah. so in your own words if you could take us through your story growing up you know mm. to where we are right now to where we are right now mm -hmm. okay so i grew up in a I would say a relatively ordinary middle class home yeah. my mom my dad my three sisters i'm the second born yes. out of four sisters yeah. so i have an older it, sister and two younger sisters no boys no boys me too really I'm the second born four. yes wow <laughs> but i wish i had a brother uh, me i don't <coughs> no, when i see my my daughters with their brother yeah. my son i'm just like wow that looks nice is, but i have a nephew though so oh really yes yes no, they want, i wish i had a brother <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh uh -huh. yeah so our upbringing was pretty ordinary um as mentioned my dad struggled with alcoholism most of our lives um which was a bit difficult but my mom was extra overly present mm. she really was the model mom in so many ways like she's just a phenomenal god god just bless her just bless her she's just she's amazing she's always been very supportive um and our lives were pretty okay primary school um high school um we all were we are pretty close the four of us yeah. although i'm i'm closest i guess with my youngest sister mm -hmm. nelly yeah. and i guess also with my oldest sister but with the one who struggles with addiction the relationship is a bit um rocky I don't even say rocky like we love each other yeah. but because of the struggles that she's been through you yes. know when you lose many years of someone's life where like i'm not as involved in her life because she's out somewhere or mm -hmm. she's not as involved in mine then it's kind of like there's a bit of a disconnect mm -hmm. um but i'm really praying that in, what's that bible verse that says the god will restore the years that the, the, years locust, the locust has yes. uh, that's we just we believe that for Good. sure that when she heals it's going to be an amazing time for our family um so yeah certainly seven million the primary school girl <laughs> Hey, this is my say story. Aisha, Aisha, baka kesho. My god. Um but yeah, we we grew up pretty okay. Mm. I went to um uh uni. Um I went abroad at some point to to not really abroad. South Africa in Azimbabwe ni abroad. No, it's abroad. Wewe watakusikia saying it. South Africa ni hapa tu. It's abroad. Oh no, it's abroad. Okay, fine. We are going there in October. We are going abroad. So we are going abroad. Yeah. Um but when I was in university yeah. first year first same in my undergrad I got pregnant that was when yeah. I got pregnant I can yes. imagine sending your kid first year first same do I a ball honestly the investment and everything I know hey. oh my god but I was so in love with my boyfriend at that time <laughs> hey to lipendana me I was sure this is my you husband. were 19 or 19 I was 19, 19, I was 19. 19. and you were in love I was so in love. you know how teenage love in a kwanga <laughs> moto this was your husband oh. <laughs> Teenage love is hot. Nothing is hotter than teenage <laughs> love. Let me tell you. Story, it's like story. and then that's the time you're trying to break free, yes. you know, from your parents and yes. you just feel like this is the man for me. And by the way, we actually sat down and agreed to have that baby. It's not that it was by mistake. Yeah, we sat down and we were just like, oh, it would be so nice to have a baby, you know, because we are so in love. We just raised this baby. When you're young, you're stupid. Let me tell you, you're stupid. Bear with, the, with the love child. With my love child. Hey. So I got pregnant. Yeah. I went and I told my parents and I mean, my mom was supportive. I mean I could tell she was disappointed but she was just like I mean this just means that your life will be a bit more challenging yeah. than maybe someone else's and might go in a, in, a, in a different director direction or may take a different trajectory but mm. it doesn't mean you can't be happy mm. and successful so I had the child and it was I mean it was like relative so this is the thing I never share this part of my story because whenever I say it because there are so many single moms who are struggling me I just I didn't feel necessarily that it was a struggle per se you know it was just like I guess maybe because my parents were supporting me financially um the the he, my baby daddy was yes. also present yes. his parents were also very supportive so I mean I just I raised the child um, we were together for a while but then we ended up breaking up mm -hmm. after I went to uni in SA yeah 
which was tragic. Imagine the person who was supposed to be my husband. Oh my God, oh it was very God. tragic. Where did the love go? Where did the love go? Where did the oh my God, I'm in love. Yeah, but so I mean, being a single mom was yeah. was was, was a, it was a journey which I feel like I definitely relate with because these days, back then, being a single mom was not as uh, prevalent as it is today. Mm. These days, I feel like literally half the population is what? like you know mm. as single moms i feel mm. like it's more and not to say that it's anyone's fault per se because there are many situations that can lead to someone being a single mom but um definitely it's not the ideal mm. situation let me say it's definitely not the ideal situation it's just easier um but when i came back from sa i got a good job i moved out so it was just me and my son against the world yes. i dated dated i had a Phase, you know, just yeah. like big people, steward. Yes. Yeah. Before I actually met my husband, yeah. who we met um, at work, actually, yeah. we were working for BAT. And when I saw him, I was just like, wow, look at that man. You just saw him Such a like, beautiful wow. man, such a good looking man. Yeah. And he saw the same. And what can I say? We got married. Okay. And hey, <laughs> that's the fastest thing I've had. <laughs> you saw him, you Actually, between good. when we started dating and yes. our wedding day was exactly one year. Wow. Exactly one year. But this is the thing, when you're dating as a single mother, you just don't have time to be wasting time. Because yes. like, I mean, it's just like either you, you we are, are we doing something or are we not doing something, you yeah. know, kind of thing. And by then, I think I was 26 or 27. Yes. Um, and I was pretty clear. I mean, I was like, if somebody, for example, has a problem with me being a mom, first of all, already it can't work, you know. But for him, he was raised by a single mother. Yeah. So he was very, um, he was in fact in love with the fact that I was a single mother. Yeah. And he was so willing to be um, present and to take him on as a responsibility. And yeah, of course, when he asked me to marry him, I was like, yes, on the top of Mount Kenya, freezing. You, you guys climbed Mount Kenya? Yes, Man, yes. You are Jima. Mm, I know, I Hey, know. wait. I can't believe you are Jima. Yes, I I look for that video. You know, can I ask you to Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. does that mean you are into fitness, hiking? And yes, Mount Kenya. a lot. You know, I've gone to Longonaut. Hey. And uh, Nilifika. Longonaut I recovered after a month. Ah. I had done like, uh, was it here? You could have done it here? No, I had done it here. Uh, then yeah, man, yeah, I recovered after a whole month. So I have fear of yeah. hiking. We used so, to love hiking yeah. together a lot. So we would hike, hike, hike. This one time we said we go to Mount Kenya. And then, you know, the best thing happened up there. Really? I was so happy. Yeah. Given I was so cold and tired and everything. But once he asked me, I was just like, now I was, I had so much energy. Ya kuteremka. Um, kuteremka. <laughs> I was hoping and skipping and jumping <laughs> all the way down. But what made you say yes, though, apart from, you know, he's cute, good mm. looking, he loves your son, he has a connection. Mm. What really made you say yes? He ticked all the boxes of everything that I needed, I wanted and needed in a man. He was, or he is tall, dark, and handsome. Yeah. Very handsome. Yes. Anyone who has seen him can not ever see him. I want to screen. Yeah. You'll know him. <laughs> he's extremely handsome. Yeah. He is loving, he's kind. Mm. He, we, we shared very similar values with regards to how we want to raise children, with regards to how we, we um, treat people in general. Mm. He was financially stable as well. And at that time, because I was a single mom, me, I had, I had asked God and told him, I really want to marry a man in his 30s. Because at that time I was like 26. Yes. I wanted to marry a man in his 30s, but I wanted a man who didn't have children. Because I was just like... Like, it felt like I'm already coming with, you know, this responsibility. Yes. And by the way, my son's father was still very actively involved in his life. He's still very actively involved in his oh, life right beautiful. now. Um, and I just wanted, I knew how, what the complexities were. And I didn't want double complexities. So when mm. I met him, I was just like, ah, just a single man in his 30s. In this Nairobi. With money, in this Nairobi. Yeah. Hey, that one, you snatch very fast. You snatched. Very, you very didn't fast. wait. I did not wait. Yeah. Plus also, uh, I mean, I just feel like when you're at a certain age, when you're dating, you just feel the vibe, you, you, know, know, you know, you just know exactly. There, there are no like outstanding red flags. Yeah. We got along very nicely. My family loved him. Everything just felt perfect. Mm. Still does yeah. feel perfect. Yeah. Everything just and made so sense. You, you, mm. you got married. And so we got married. How was the wedding? We've had, it was, um, it was okay. <laughs> Let me just say it was okay. It was not my favorite day in the world. I know people say at their wedding is their favorite day in the world. Mine, I wasn't because one, I was pregnant. Haki, people don't get married when you're pregnant. Why? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Because you're tired. 
uh-huh. the whole wedding from the day from the morning i was just like guys he kitu yishe maze to end home mm. oh my god i had even told the mc if you make me dance for longer than 20 minutes by the yeah. i'm leaving no invoice ah uh, me don't want yeah. mm-hmm. so i was tired in fact the whole wedding was pretty much planned by Zach and his family wow. i i literally me all i did was just i designed mm. my dress and wore my dress yeah. and i helped the bridesmaids choose their dresses but i wasn't really like at like oh my god i want this flowers i want this whatever i wasn't like that mm. he planned everything mm-hmm. i was just tired i yeah. was just tired our wedding ended at 5 pm sharp i was just like now it's finished please take me home what is where yeah. did you honeymoon we honeymooned in watamu oh yeah which was really nice yeah um we Looks had wanted like you to go enjoyed that part yes <laughs> Okay. I did really enjoy Sana. Okay. It was actually quite lovely. Yes. Um and that was nice and then we had our, our second born now, Mukeni, yeah. Yeah. who is now 6. Mukeni means happiness. Yeah. 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 One who is happy. Yeah, yeah the happy one. Yeah. Um that was in 2017 that okay. we had her then 2020 we had Mutana yeah. who is now 3 yeah. and a half. Yeah, so yes. you are a family of 5 now. Yeah, I'm family of 5 and I, that's how we wanted to stay. Uh, hey, I don't have any more babies left in me. Mm-mm. Really? Mm-mm. But let's talk about the after marriage mm-hmm. you know the wedding the bliss the honeymoon mm-hmm. i had a guest here and she she said lean love is not a feeling mm-hmm. there is more to love than just a feeling mm-hmm. you know once now you guys come and you start to live in the same house because mm-hmm. i can imagine I, i i i had you didn't live together until the wedding oh, yeah. but now once you come and start living together was what you ordered what was delivered hey um okay <laughs> Let me say that it wasn't it wasn't what I had ordered yes. but it was different but it was still good. Mm-hmm. But I feel like there are certain things in life, marriage, motherhood, <clears throat> entrepreneurship, those things you really cannot know what it's like until you're inside one. Mm. If anyone you are not a mother and you say oh I, but I know what it's like you don't. Marriage and motherhood you cannot know what it's like until you're actually in there. Mm. Obviously there are some challenges that you're not mentally prepared for when um the children come at least by the time we were getting married because we already had Ethan my mm. firstborn. Yeah. We didn't really have a honeymoon period where it's just the two of us which I wish that we 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 had but mm-hmm. obviously we didn't have we couldn't have that. Mm-hmm. Um There were some challenges to adjusting. I mean just the basic things of yes. like the way this person sleeps, the way this person, how you know, they how they throw clothes. Clo- ah! Oh my god. You know how the they interact, yeah. Everything. People's approach approach to like when can your family come over anytime, yeah. when another family member comes, how often we send money to these people, how often we do this, even having sex expectations versus reality yes. can be very different especially mm. after having children. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah it did take some adjustment but looking back now I wouldn't say it's bad it's just like it's a reality check yeah. let me say and then at that point is when you realize why they say marriage is a commitment it's not you're just married because oh we love each other oh it's so cute that's when you decide but now when you're inside there you really just have to commit you just have to commit mm-hmm. and just have the discipline of knowing I have chosen this person before God before man before the law yes. of Kenya we have decided that we are going to be together forever mm. so we need to try and make it work the mm. best to the best of our ability mm-hmm. of course it's perfectly fine if it doesn't work yeah. out yeah. but for us we were like we are really determined not we were we are really determined mm. to um see it through for the long haul okay mm. and i love that you said your son Ethan still mm. has a great relationship with the dad mm-hmm. so how has co-parenting been and what makes it work for you given you are in marriage mm. right now So when I when before I met Zach it was quite easy to co-parent because mm-hmm. um, there's no other man in the picture so it was just uh, he would send some child support money every yeah. month um and I would um he would stay some days he's at my house mm-hmm. weekends maybe some weekends he goes to his dad's house something like that but when I um met Zach it was very important to him to Zach specifically that we ensure that there are healthy boundaries that um will not hinder um Ethan's ability to be a formative part of our family mm. and will not cause the other party also to now be like no we have decided now today I want my yes. son you know so we consulted our lawyer and um he advised us that there's something you can sign as co-parenters called a parental responsibility agreement mm-hmm. I'm always shouting about this on my platform and I need more co-parenters to to listen to this and to do it A parental responsibility agreement is basically a document that you sign between two co-parenters which protects the right 
the rights of the child and your own individual rights as well. Mm -hmm. It is a legal document which just basically says how much specifically will be paid in child support every month. Who is the primary caretaker of the child? How often does he spend at your house? How often does he spend at my house? Who pays the school fees? Who buys books? Who buys clothes? And it is written on that legal document which I sign, you sign, and it's taken um, before a court of law and it's registered mm -hmm. as a legal document. Yeah. <clears throat> That made it very easy for us. Of course, there was some negotiation back and forth about like, no, may I want him this often? May I want him this often? This how much you should pay in child support? Mm -hmm. This what we shouldn't pay? Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, we signed it and it has been working perfectly for yes. the past six years. Wow. The document says school holiday, half the time he's at your house, half the time he's at my house. Mm -hmm. So there's no negotiation now about you can just show up and be like, ah, we're not coming to No, in the exactly. Because if you actually are in breach of that, mm -hmm. I can sue you. Yeah. And I, the, the state can now say you're not fit to be a parent mm -hmm. and I will get the child. Mm -hmm. So he really respects it and he has his own family. He has a yeah. fiance and two other children wow. and I really respect it as well. Mm -hmm. It says when child support should be sent, school fees, we are paying half half, you know, um, books, whatever, clothes, mm -hmm. everything half half mm -hmm. and it works very nicely mm -hmm. and everyone respects the boundaries. Yeah, mm -hmm. Is that something you would encourage more people out here to do because I've also had the opportunity to host a couple of single spouses mm -hmm. and sometimes I look at, I'm a woman so I'm just going to speak for the women yeah. the <coughs> easiest way to punish someone you fell out of love mm -hmm. with sometimes is through the child so they can't see the child mm -hmm. how, how are you able to put those differences as adults and not bring the child in between and also to how how do you now say okay no i'm bitter this person did this to me and this but the child mm. cannot suffer in this process so i can't say mm. at a, that at a, we were super mature at yeah. the beginning because mm. at the point at which we broke up and the breakup wasn't necessarily acrimonious it's just we had grown in different directions and mm. it just wasn't making sense for us to be together anymore but of course there's all those feelings of like i thought we would be together forever yeah. you know someone is sad and whatever so it's not that at a, immediately we broke up sasa mm. yosa i mm. think it took like about a year and a half because the reality is that there are feelings and there are emotions and i mean you you get angry first of all my son looks exactly like his dad so now i mean already every time i'm just seeing him i'm just like now you know even your dad you know you're Six. thinking it yes. but you're not saying it you're already just feeling bitter yeah. so for like about a year and a half mm -hmm. it was definitely a bit a bit um there was a bit of bitterness and there was a bit of resentment mm -hmm. um but after that i think it helps when now ukipata mtu because sasa alipata mtu mimi nikapata mtu yeah. and then now it was easy it was just like okay we just need to raise this kid yes. you know then it's not you don't feel bitter and angry mm -hmm. i guess if at the point at which maybe your spouse um or your former partner has moved on and you can't find anyone mm -hmm. maybe that's when people really feel like mm -hmm angry you know um but i think first i would just tell people give it some time yes. it doesn't have to be immediately give it some time there's obviously a period after breaking up that it's important that you, you process yeah you process and you take your time to be able to be like you have to it's almost like a death mm -hmm. actually it's mm -hmm. like a death because this was your hopes and dreams for the future yeah. and now you're like we were, we had dated for six years which is by the way we have only been married with my husband six years so you can imagine this is the amount of time i had spent with that other person so of course it was a lot it was like i felt like i gave you my youth now it has not worked out you mm -hmm. know what's going to happen give it some time but above all that we need to now just move past the pl place of allowing our feelings to determine everything in mm -hmm. our lives mm -hmm. and that's the biggest this is the reason why teenagers and people below the age of 25 actually Have should not no be business. having <laughs> children because you're just not in, your frontal lobe is not even developed you are not mature enough to be having a child, you know. Please, people just need to be serious. People need to be serious. You just need to push past those feelings. Yeah. Even when we did the PRA, of course, there was sometimes still we can get into like a bit of an, an argument, you know, here and there. But we now the goodness of the PRA is yes. that it allows you to transcend above your feelings. Mm. It doesn't matter if I'm angry at you. It doesn't matter if what has happened, what has the document said. We refer to it like it's the Bible, like by the way. The Bible. It has said next weekend, he's at your house. Yes. It has said this weekend He's whatever if company men no uniform like two days ago men yes. no uniform nas, natuma to receipt mm. he sends half the money mm. if you and it just works yes and it would really save people a lot of heartache mm. this one over he just shows up 
at the house and then now she's asking for the baby or this other person that just showed up what kind of chaotic lives mm-hmm. do we want it's our chaotic. children to live it's no, chaotic no, no, no. but let's talk mm. about now your son in Zach because mm. he's coming in in he has dad here and also feels mm. tempted to call Zach dad you know which ha- he does actually oh mm. really that's mm. beautiful yeah. ha- how did Zach handle all that and did he make it easy for mm. you to go through this co-parenting journey yeah so um it was actually what i can say is that it was god ordained to be uh-huh. honest this is another reason why it was so easy for me to say yes to him when when um he asked me to marry him yeah. of course when you are single mom it's not that every guy you're dating you're not bringing them home to your son yes. because like today it's oh look at uncle tim tomorrow uncle Zdwinani, kesho uncle brian no so even any of the people who i dated between when um my baby daddy and i broke up to mm-hmm. when i met zach mm-hmm. he didn't meet any of them mm-hmm. but with zach i just felt a comfort a freedom you know because i remember even the first day when i told him i'm a single mom most of the guys i would tell i'm a single mom you would kind of see them saying mm, okay i mean we can work with that i guess mm-hmm. but for him he was like genuinely interested because yes. he had been raised by a single mom he was like oh tell me what happened you know whatever he was very accommodating yeah. And I think the first time he met him, he actually Zach invited us to come to his church. Yeah. So it was a Sunday, we went to his church. I think this was maybe two months after we had started dating. Mm-hmm. And um so they met and he was just like, Hi, just said, Oh, this is my friend, this is Ethan. Yeah. And they just like gelled. That time Ethan was like maybe six mm. years old. I'm a five five, six years old six yes. years old actually. Yes. And then he took us to his house, he cooked for us lunch, which was so nice. He's a chef. He's, hmm. okay. Since we got married, I have not seen that man. You know, a man is a bachelor. Yeah. Hey, he and do, he bachelor can do wonders. Hey. Now, By the I way, that part, scam. Yes. Honestly, scum, it's a scam. scam. Now, I mean, it's we have scam. two nannies, so mm. he's just like, why am I cooking? Yes. For what am I cooking? That part, you know? it's a scam. Mm. Don't believe this man. Don't, no. Don't believe them. No. Mm-mm. Yeah. But he, so he cooked for us, and yeah. it was just lovely. Um, and then Ethan would just used to call him Zach. But after we got engaged, yes. I can't even remember. It was just one day, Ethan just called him dad. And it has just been dad ever yeah. since then, you know. Yeah. But I, I mean, none of us wanted to pressure him and start telling him, no, you have to call him daddy. Yeah. You have to. I was just like, whatever he wants to call him, he can call him. So Good. when he started calling him yes. dad, I was just like, no. That's fantastic. Mm. And now he he the more we have done the co-parenting and he has a very strong relationship with Zach and a very strong relationship with his other dad. Yeah. Um sometimes like when he's speaking we always know which dad he's referring oh, to. Yeah. So he'll always be so like dad know. or he'll say my other dad oh. or he'll say this dad yes. uh, yeah this the UK dad cuz Zach was living in the UK for some time or yeah. he'll say yeah. other dad. Yeah. So we, we we just know which dad he's referring to. Okay. And I mean he likes it. I think these days because single parent households or like a uh, unique kind of households are mm-hmm. becoming more mainstream yes. even in school he's always he says he's used to telling people me i have a mom and i have two dads good he knows he yeah has a bonus he knows and he's too. not even embarrassed about it yeah. he's just like yeah me i have two dads yeah, so good. and he's always and he he sees himself in zach a lot and even sometimes my online audience say that he looks like zach yeah Which oh, I, no, think so. mm, I think so I really checked. yes I just look at but them like where like you start looking like each other you don't know don't marry ugly people then Guy, because why mm, you know now you you start looking like each other yes Mm-mm. you start looking at it. but that, that that's nice though yeah. but you said you had also dated some few people here and there mm. but you had not introduced him exactly. to those people yeah. so is there like a timeline where if I'm a single mom mm. or if I'm a single spa mini uh, dad how should I now gauge when to introduce my child to this and mm. other people i would say and when did you not introduce and, him yeah okay i would say that okay so the people who i dated in between there yeah. none of them was like for marriage yes. it was very it was more situationships you know just to lose lose mm. things it was not it, it's a, it's more about the depth than about yes. the time frame of dating mm-hmm. even in the time frame zach and i when we met in march by august we were engaged December to Likwana Rurasho yeah. March was our wedding. Mm-hmm. So a lot to a lot of people it was like that's so fast. I mean if you tell someone in 5 months of meeting someone you're already engaged mm-hmm. it seems fast. Mm-hmm. But for me I just feel like it's more about what is the depth of the conversations you're having. Yeah. How committed are you guys? Because sometimes honestly you don't need 5 6 years for you to tell that this is not the person no, who you, you know you're supposed to be with. You like don't. it's at a, and you always know you at the beginning. Always know, but you you're always just like know. you're like ah, anyway let me just stay with this one while I look for another one. But then you just and now it's 10 years yes. you have four kids and you are where stuck. are you going 
you are stuck. Where are you going? You're going yeah. nowhere. And you see, that's the problem. A lot of people are willing to, to sacrifice based on that. You can create a really deep connection mm. in five months and you can have dated yes. someone 10 years and you don't know much about them, yeah. you know. And so for me, the others who I had dated before Zach, it was just very, it was very casual kind of. But with Zach, from the first day, we were having really deep conversations. You know, he was, he was honest and we were being, like I just felt really comfortable and mm. safe around and him safe. you know and it's not as a woman it's like feeling safe around a man is a really big thing yes, because men let me not say anything because there's some men here but uh, you know it's sometimes no, no, no. <laughs> Yes, uh, feeling really safe around a man, for yeah. me, that's a, a green flag. Mm. You know, it's like when you're with this person, are you feeling like, oh God, he could hurt me? Yes. Or if something goes wrong and there's an or what, you know, kind of thing. But I just felt really safe around him. Mm. And I was like, I want my son to experience that energy. So mm. I would tell single moms or single dads, it's not necessarily a time frame, because some people might get there in a month. Some people, it might take six months. It might even take a I year. Know. It's more about the, the depth of commitment. But mm. by the time you're introducing them to your child, it needs to be more than just, ah, this is just my my friend yes. who we just you know yeah. uh, hang around sometimes mm -hmm. it needs to be like this is something that we are both committed to Good. and we are trying to grow you have to be intentional about exactly. it exactly but let's talk about marriage now because mm -hmm. you are a content creator mm. people know you online but then this day we woke up and there was just drama left right and center <laughs> Mm -hmm. about your marriage mm -hmm. you know and it's funny that you came in and fortunately or unfortunately one of our uh, creative directors shares a name with <laughs> with edgar obare you know mm -hmm. and we just woke up not obare but the edgar itself mm -hmm. you know and we just woke up and murugi this zach this nas judy this this and this and this and this huh? i don't want to preempt anything but mm -hmm. what do you have to say about that so um, this is one of those things I hardly, I never comment about. Yeah. Me, by the way, if you notice on my platform, mm -hmm. there will be, people can write anything. She has murdered this person. They have done this. I don't know, her children were seen where, whatever. Yes. I will, I never say anything. Mm -hmm. Because one thing I've realized with being online is that it doesn't matter. A lot of people, especially Kenyans, are not discerning they're not discerning when it comes to the media mm. all they need to see is a title murugi this murugi this and they have already decided that's what it is yes. so most people do not open and read the article most people will not do their due diligence to check and see like wait but is this adding up mm. that is this actually making sense a mm. lot of people don't do that mm. so i am always cautious of i don't want to waste my energy where it is serving no value mm. i always just feel like if you want to believe you know that i'm a certain kind of person then it's okay you mm -hmm. just go and believe because anyway you're not feeding me mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it's like I, I i can't spend so much of my energy trying to defend myself online mm -hmm. you know one thing i always tell people uh, whether it, re it relates to my marriage or to anyone else's marriage first me i can never defend uh hands or mouth that are not mine yes. me i only know what me have done yes. me, i don't know about what anybody else has done mm -hmm. but i also say because you do not know anything about anyone else's marriage people who have seen each other naked leave them leave alone, them alone. <laughs> yes leave them alone because mm. you just you will never understand it you know mm. and i i because whatever is seen online is this part of the story the only way that i would clear all those things up is by now coming to tell this all this everything else that happens mm. or everything else that happened in the midst of that yeah. and do i really want to spend my energy doing that lynn no. I really don't, mm. you know. So for me, what I try to do is I just try to ride the wave. Mm -hmm. I ride the wave. I've seen um, uh, this other lady. I don't say her name out loud, but I've mm. seen this other lady insult me, talk about me, say I'm such a horrible person. But it's like, okay, even if I'm a horrible person, how is it hurting you? Let me be a horrible person here then, you yes. know. It's like this. anyone can wake up and say, even a competitor of yours can wake up and just say, you know, Lynn, she's such a selfish person. No, I've had it before. Yeah. Yeah. Then now it's like, okay, so now what do you want us to do about that? Mm. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't find, um, I don't understand why someone else would now be like, you, you're this kind of person, but why is it your business? Mm. Why is it your business whether or not my husband and I are doing okay? Because the reality is that people online do not care about you and your marriage. Yes. In fact, misery loves company. And while I do appreciate my supporters, my fans and the people who follow me, I know that they are not my friends. And this is a, a fact. 
I know that they are not my friends. I know that they'll be there clapping and liking when something good happens to me. But, but I also know, yeah, happens. they'll also be the ones there watching yes. and looking and not necessarily and being a silent follower because mm. they're not going to go out and start defending you like, yes. oh, I know Murugi's character or whatever. Mm. So it's a very thin line between now you feel the need to come out and defend yourself yeah. and you just let it be. Mm. And the best thing about Kenyan media is that today you're the news. Tomorrow, Tomorrow Lynn has been found in a ditch somewhere. Yes, caught drinking. drinking. Caught drinking. The <laughs> Lynn Cookie spotted with her white cap. Seen. Exactly. Scholar. That's it. <laughs> Scholar, That's where it. have we seen you? Scholar has been found in a club in yes. Stewart with which governor, yes. Akouko. Mm, mm. The next, that, it just mm. moves. You know, that's just the way media, that, and for me, I try to actually use it to my favor. Yeah. Now when people, all publicity is good publicity. Good. So you'll say, you'll say, you'll say, you'll say, now I have more people on my mm. page. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And for, for me personally, I don't even hold anything against Edgar Obare mm. or against his platform. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is, even though I don't agree with his, some of his methods, he's just a Kenyan trying to make money out here. And just like you, are. just like me, everyone just like anyone is. else. Yeah, and if the best way that he has seen to do that is to mm. expose people or to tarnish people's yeah. names or to insult people, mm. then let them just do it. Again, that's not my business. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, we are all just going to, to answer for the things that we have done. Good. You know? I think I love that. Exactly. I love that and so, answer. Yeah, and so... Yeah. Mi acha ni shugulike na business yangu, ati ya na shugulike na business. Eh, na ya na shugulike na business yake, na ni hivo. Okay, but let me ask, and the thing I say about this space, it's very safe. We never want someone to discuss what, that's why I asked you, what can I not ask, you know? But did that whole scenario affect you and Zach, and how are you able to come out of it? It definitely did affect us, for sure, 100%. Of course, so Zach is actually a, a very private person. Yeah. Even the times when he shows up on my page, it's me ni me convinced. You yes. know, I'm a major kuchukua picture undercover or yeah. something like that. But he doesn't really like to be online. Yeah. So of course for him it was a really difficult time thing mm. to go through for both of us because the the things that were being said the um some of the lies that were being peddled, you know, just the whole narrative around it. It's a very personal thing. Yes. A marriage is a very personal thing. Even having sex with someone is it's a very personal, personal thing. thing. Everything in about what was being discussed was very personal, mm. you know? And I'm not here to now say that this happened, this didn't happen, whatever. I'm not here to defend myself because mm. I don't need to. Yes. But it was really, really difficult for us. Actually, at some point, we even separated. But it was not separating those ones for, like, we wanted to break up. Yeah. It was that this the situation was causing us so much stress that it was really impossible for mm. us to just be together yeah. at that time yeah. in a respectful way mm. so we took a break we took some time apart i think it was just about two weeks yeah. um and then we just came back together and we spoke about what had happened mm. and we had conversations mm. we did therapy we have oh, you did oh yeah we are such we are believers in therapy me yes. more than him yes but we are definitely believers in therapy mm. And um, like I said, no one really knows what's happening in someone's yeah. marriage except yeah. the two people in it, you know. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, we did what we could to keep our marriage together. Mm. Um, and we have rebuilt since... The, actually, maybe that's what I can say. I was rebuilt. I did. You know, was coming. Rebuilt. Yeah. We have reached there after yeah. an hour, ten minutes. We well are one done. hour, ten minutes. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, I mean, that, that one, it has been a journey, mm. but it definitely was a lesson mm. for both of us. Um, for me, it was a lesson about, uh, you know, when I, we first started dating, I used to tag him, tag him everywhere. Yes. In fact, now when I think back, what am I tagging him for? Don't when them follow. And then... Now, Kisha, welcome to work. That's the thing. Why is it that oh. what wana gojango weke? Me sit I weka wangu. Oh, uh, si, we we'll find you in the, oh, in the bar. Wapi? Lean spotted si with Miss Kiman. Ni si munifai. Ah. In a country of 50 million people, I can't go and have a Sprite no, somewhere. No, you can't. You can't. You see, they I, will find I think you. I've reached that level of, mm. if you find me, it's okay. Mm. See, whatever it is you are looking for, see, you will find. But so um, back to that. Eh? So me ni konamtu. Hey, wow. Eh? Wait, wait. wait. This <laughs> <laughs> to him, sasa, sisi, sasa. Let's make the story about someone else. Eh? You know. Oh, you're right. Yes. You're right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but you see, the yeah. thing is that there are some benefits and some negatives to sh showing your partner online. Yeah. You see, for me, my my page is so hinged on family. On um, like I, like a lot of my content is hinged on family. Mm. You see, if I put a picture, let's say of myself, I'll get maybe two thousand likes, three thousand. Yeah. Me with Zach, it can be even eleven thousand, twelve thousand. Mm. Mm. Me with Zach and the kids, 
people really like seeing families yes. they like seeing marriages but they also like seeing them break because that's when they are now they are laughing laughing yeah, and if, 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 exactly if their has broken that's it exactly feel. yeah now you think as in the, because you're just happy you think you can find people mm -mm. Mm -hmm. people especially if their own marriage has broken down they want it to be like you see you're not yes. superhuman even yeah. you your own marriage can break down yeah and i think a lot of people are still angry that zach and i are still together today that we are happy in fact sometimes i i get a message from someone who are just like you know i can just tell you're pretending to be happy and you know that you just but you can just let go i'm like i'm literally not i am so happy you know i'm so happy they even know you are pretending <laughs> imagine <I'm> like, you, <laughs> from where you are my sister how yes. do you know you yeah. know and it's like it's this obsession with other people's lives which it's not their fault because social media mm. you're always online you always see i've posted and mm -hmm. what and of course you being on my page is how yes. i make money so it's like it's not your fault but mm. All I can say is are that you, are you we happy have you guys you, you we fought are, for your marriage. We are so happy. We are so glad that we did. Mm. We are so glad that we did and it was a it was a difficult time but we learned some very valuable lessons. Mm -hmm. One of them being sometimes it's very easy to take the person that you're with for granted yeah. it's very easy because you know umemzoya too they're just always here mm. until you see how in a split second oh. this person this family could be over you know your your family where you have your kids yeah. and your spouse it could all be over in an instant mm. it definitely has made us Strong. a lot more appreciative of each other mm. i'm a lot more keen about the kinds of things that we allow uh, in, you know into our space mm. the kind of um even the things that i would post of him before i feel like i used to post even some very maybe overshare a little bit yes. these days it's a bit more surface level mm. when it comes to like my marriage mm. um and my parenting because the reality is that also if you're sharing a lot people will comment a lot mm -hmm. so you can't share a lot and expect that people are not going to comment, comment a, lot. a lot um so it has definitely helped us put a few more boundaries yeah. but i can definitely say that we are in an amazing mm -hmm. place we are mm -hmm. we are loving where we are we are appreciating each other a lot more mm -hmm. and i can't i mean i can't wait to be one day saying we've been married 20 years how beautiful mm -hmm. you see that yes you feel it I, you I, manifest I it i manifest you, it and i'm you, working for it yes are you good friends we are best friends wow. we are best friends actually most of the people who interact with us will always say that that yeah. oh wow you guys just seem like your friends mm. he is literally my best friend he's my mm. biggest supporter he is um i mean he's just so loving he's the best dad mm. to the kids mm. he is just he's just phenomenal and i really thank god for him mm. i really do thank god for him and um one thing another thing that i learned from that scenario is that people's love story your own love story doesn't have to make sense to anyone else except ah, you that's the point exactly of course it can't be at your man is beating you every day and you're no. saying no lakini mimi huyu ni wangu you know my man jana. is not beating me uh, we thank god mm. we thank god mm. yes yeah because it can't be at now everyone is like this person is horrible for you mm. you know don't be with them but it's like especially when you're a celeb people just will never always know your yeah. side of the story otherwise you'd be spending all day every day doing q and a's about like okay so what happened so what did you find yes. so explain this screenshot so now whatever no oh, my god no who and has you, the time no it's a lot yeah i think those are the downfalls of being on social That's being a yeah. content creator honestly yeah people would call an occupational hazard yeah when you are well known the occupational hazard is that your privacy is limited and mm. that's factual whether yes. you like it or not your privacy is just limited and the reality is that a lot will be said about you half of which is not true mm. and more often than not you will not be able to go back yes. and rescind because by the time someone puts out a, a message saying a uh, murugi muni uh, cheats on husband it doesn't matter like that that is all even if you come out now and rebut and do you do what and what people already have that image in their mind mm. so what why waste your time mm. but for me it's almost like you have to just make peace with it yeah you have to make peace with it and me i have made peace with it i never think at people online have robbed me of anything mm. because that's giving them too much power it's no one much. can rob me of anything hey. yeah yeah you they can't rob me of anything because yes. i haven't given them anything to rob me of mm. you know it's it's it, for me it's just I mean whatever it is that makes people feel important let them have let it them you have know it, eh? so if you feel like you can write an article mm. about me which mm. has half truths and just publish it and have people think about me a certain way then you just do it yes. because now you the when daughter you know you'll answer mm. to god on your own mm. me i'll only answer for what i have done which is mm. why i've said me i can only defend my hands my mouth, my mouth and yes. my private parts yes. i can't defend <laughs> anyone else's 
I I wasn't with people. I'm not everywhere in every yes. bedroom now to be like, okay, so now <laughs> this one, so this is what. Okay, I I yes. don't know. Yeah. May only know my own, and I know what I and did, and it. I know what I haven't you know done. That is truth. it. Yes, exactly. You know your truth. Yeah, and the reality is that mm. I feel like for as long as we are well known, you and I and anyone else who is, that's just the way we are going to live. Mm. A lot of times, you have to make peace with the fact that you might not be able to give your side of the story. Someone might tell a lie about you. You know, you might not. You might um get a label that you don't feel like is you but mm. what can you do about it what yeah. i can do is face my front and continue doing the work that brings me online to Keep. impact people to encourage people to yes. inspire people to yes. educate to entertain yeah. that's what brings me online yes. I'm, i cannot be if you're in every single side show someone has said something murugi has responded someone has that's too <coughs> much power and let me tell you the most annoying thing <laughs> Even to this day, yeah. these these bloggers, I I can put a caption about anything. I'll say something like, "Wow, love this white cup." Mm. They'll be like, "Murugi hits back at I don't know who for saying that." Hey. And we are like, I wasn't this person. I've not even thought about them yes. for years. Yeah. But anything that you say now, they start trying to tie it to that. Mm. But of course, because Pe- drama sells. People gotta make money. Yeah. Contra- they gotta make money. Sales. Drama sells. So now yeah. I'm like, you write what you need to write. Mm. But me, my conscience is clear. I, 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 I'm who I am. I am the way that I am. Yeah. And I'm living life. And, and that's I enjoy. It. Yeah. Yeah. I wanna close on this part, mm. but I'll do a great disservice if I don't ask this mm. question to the audience. Mm. The lady in the picture. Do you hold any resentment toward? I don't think so. I feel like I'm indifferent. Yeah. I'm indifferent because um, whether or not anything happened between her and my husband, I feel like the only person who is accountable to me yes. is my husband. Good. My husband is the only one accountable to me. Anyone yeah. else is, it could be anyone. It mm. could be literally any Jerry, Anyango and Wanjiko mm. outside here. Mm. And that person means nothing to me. Yeah. Literally means nothing to me. Mm. I obviously don't like being insulted, I don't like being um, thrown tomatoes at, I don't like all these things, but there's a part of me that, that feels empathy, that feels sadness for her, because I'm just like, sh- if anything happened that made you feel like less worthy, you know, or something like that, or for somebody to resort to certain, um, to certain uh, techniques, it really must have hurt that person, you know, or what happened really must have um, torn apart their self-esteem. So I empathize just from being a woman. Yes. Me, by the way, above all, all women, I'm just like, I just want women to be happy. Oh, I want, want women, women to, to succeed. I want women to you win. You are a girl's girl. I really am. Yes. And I'm, so I'm just like, you know, whatever it is, I hope that, I hope she heals. Mm. I hope she prospers. Yes. And I, for me, this whole thing about uh, I, holding a grudge is already, again, you're giving someone so much power in I your heart. See. I just don't have space for yes. that. I don't have. Imagine I'm a mother. I'm growing three children. I am growing businesses. I am growing wealth. Do I have time and energy really to be much. somewhere thinking about it's at this much. one person? I'm so angry. I really yes. just don't. Yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't say that actually she's my best friend or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I but I definitely don't hold anger. I don't hold resentment. Mm-hmm. I'm just indifferent. She's just a person out there yeah. who is not in my marriage. Mm. The person who I, I, I am committed to and um, growing something with is my husband. And, and that it. is the person who I continue to Good. remain, um, yes. you know, who will continue to remain accountable to me mm. and who I will continue to remain accountable Good. to. Good, let's talk about TMI. Oh, in ooh, between wow. us are watching and they're like, Lean, <laughs> yes, Lean, when are we going to talk about TMI? Mm. Right now, you and Lead, you run one of the most successful. I told Lead and mm. I said, you can you can quote me. Mm. Yours will be one of the biggest podcasts in the world. I even Thank say, you. don't limit this thing to Thank Africa. Thank you to Kenya yes, Africa. You know, oh. No, don't do it because I, I see that I go, I'm there, I've subscribed the comments, the people, the topics that <coughs> you handle. Mm. What was the initial idea behind and coming up with TMI? So, um, I guess it was our friendship. Yeah. I would say I would say our friendship was definitely the driving force. Yes. Um, there was a time I know we ha- did an IG live on Lydia's page yeah. and the conversation was flowing. Hey. There was back and forth. And even just like regular conversation between her and I, it's yes. always so... In a bamba. It's in a, good. In it's, a good. Chica. <laughs> it's so hot. We love yeah. it so much. And yeah. so, at some point... Um, some company had approached me to start a podcast Mm -hmm. um, and I was actually going to start it with someone else, which I thank God it didn't work out because when she fell through, Lydia was like, oh, we should do it. And I was like, 
yeah, let's, do, let's it. do it. And the magic that is TMI happened. Yeah. And Lydia is always saying that she always knew from the beginning it would be a big deal. Oh. Me, I don't, I don't know. I hadn't really thought about whether it would be a big deal or not. I'm more the kind of person who is like, I just want to get this task done. I'm not really thinking about how it's going to look when it gets over there. Really? You know, I'm more like, because once you get the fundamentals right, yes. who knows what it can be. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's been an amazing platform. Mm. Again, we get to connect with so many girls. Talk about things that more women just need to talk about yes. and 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 learn about like sex and mm. relationships and career and mm. their bodies and contraception mm. and you know just basic things that me and you yes. are struggling with but me i'm struggling with it silently and, and you are struggling with it silently. silently but if i talk to you let's yeah. put them on the table exactly let's yes. talk and then you can be able to tell me oh me i tried this mm. so you try it and then you're like oh wow thank mm. you you've helped me and that's the kind of space we are trying to create Good. with tmi yeah mm. and i gotta ask you what i asked her you mm. know she spoke so highly of you and mm. your friendship but what do you love about lead oh my god Ay. do we have the time yes we do, do we have we the time do, oh do. my god <laughs> lydia is uh, she represents something so unique to me in my life so first of all when i met lydia i was at a point in my life like i was about to get to 30 and i i didn't have that many close female friendships so remember when I told you about I was with the father of my, my son yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Our relationship was very toxic, by the way. He never used to like me hanging out with other people. So we only used to hang out the two of us. So until um, about like 25, mm. I hardly ever made any like true deep connections. Mm. I think I would say I only had like one or two really good friends. Yeah. And as I was approaching 30, one of the things that I remember really wanting is I really wanted to like make good friends, you know. And when I first met her, I didn't think, obviously, she was going to be the one because, mm. I mean, she just, she, with her accent and everything, you know, I judged her. Yes. I judged her from the onset. I was just I like, she seemed like a really shallow person. I I, yeah, imagine, the deepest person, <laughs> deeper than the ocean, I thought she was shallow. Oh. But the more we worked together, the more we spoke, the more we spent time together, is when I realized, like, wow, she's really deep. Mm. And I love how our friendship has blossomed because I see so much that i want to be in lydia she's so mindful she's so present you know she's the kind of person who is constantly trying to be a better person mm. someone who literally today she's a better person than she was yesterday. yesterday and that applies for every single day even when she's having a down day she just knows how to to elevate and watching her the trajectory of her life because when we met i was already a content creator i already had a big yes. platform but she didn't yeah. and i remember her coming to tell me she's just like i want to start doing this i want to start earning money like you and i told her this is what you need to do you mm -hmm. need to be consistent you need to show up you need to you know take time you need to um grow a relationship with your audience and she did it and like look at her now just flourishing like the queen that she is yeah okay. she's one of those people who is super ambitious yeah. just like me yes so we do have a lot in common she's ambitious just like me, she um, she's goal oriented. Mm. She's not the kind of person who at the oh we've said okay, so we need to really call this person and have a conversation. Yeah. Okay, let's call them now. Yes. Let's do it now. Let's go tomorrow. You mm. know, she's and I also think that way. It's just like why are we wasting time? What are we doing now? Mm. Why can't we do that thing now? Mm. And she's very much like that. But she's also very warm very warm even though she doesn't come across that way sometimes yes. i feel like yes. sometimes when i'm watching her i'm just like she doesn't even seem that way yes. because, and because i guess maybe just because she's not a mom <laughs> she doesn't appear motherly yes. but to me she's very motherly yeah. and she's just one of the things i love most about her is like we can be sitting somewhere once i start speaking nimeanza tuivi she'll put her phone down Amianda. and she's 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 staring at me yes. like okay let's see here yeah. which is so that's a love language on yeah. its own she's very attentive she has taught me so much about myself gotten me in therapy wow. you know so she's one of those people who she not only makes herself better she makes all the people, the people around, around her, her better. better she really goes out of her way to make yes. sure she's like how she's doing this what about you mm. you know what are you doing but mm. also but in a gently purposing you yes. not like forcing you to become something that you're not ready to become you yeah. know um yeah man oh i just you love her I love her. Yeah. Actually, when I think about like what would my thirties be right now if I had not met Lydia, I don't want to think. Good. I refuse to think. Yes. Mm. What have you your views on friendships right now? Because you said you didn't have many friends. I did mm. a video on friendship mm. in the comment section of people talking about friendship, how they don't have any friends right now. Mm. Has your definition of friendship changed over time? And how many friends do you have? The ones you can't. <laughs> 
But now I have more. I think yes. I say I have like five to six friends. Oh yeah. <coughs> I feel like when you're in your thirties, mm. the word friend is very loaded. It's not like I feel like in your twenties or teens, anyone who to make utana now even call is my friend. friend. Hey. This is, you are my friend. Ah oh, yeah, this is my friend. It right now, day. yeah. Hey, it's kola. I'll be saying yeah. that all day. <laughs> I feel like in your in your 20s it's just yes. like oh anyone can be your friend but in mm. your 30s being someone's friend means a lot more it's like you know is it someone who you have mutual value it's yes. almost like just being in a relationship but now it's just that you know it's, yes. it's not it's platonic yeah. so i feel like i she also actually really changed my views on friendship she is extremely intentional with her friendships mm. extremely even things like just calling to check on people at just sending a message to check on people in fact sometimes i watch her, i'm like oh, what are you doing she's like oh i'm sending a message to my friend to just check on them so i'm like yeah. oh okay even me let me send a message to oh, a friend and just check on them, them. <laughs> yeah because I, I felt like i don't i didn't really know yes. how to be people's friends yeah. you know um but watching her has been amazing and mm. i feel like now you know as you get older friends are so much more important but also so much harder to maintain the friendship yes, because yes. we are busy you're busy i'm Life busy is hard. someone says when are you free i'm just like am i ever free really Never. because maybe i'll be free on saturday but on mm. saturday when i'm free i want to rest i don't want to you know go out i don't want to whatever yeah. it can be so bad and some yes so it, it's been difficult, but mm. she's shown me that it's more about the little things. It's yes. not really about it, necessarily a huge thing mm. that you have to throw a, a birthday party for your friend, for you to show you're a good friend. Mm. It's the small things like checking up on you, a celebrating with there. you when you are, um, you know, when you win something, mm. you know, or just being present for you through a yeah. difficult moment. Yeah. Um, the problem with friendships today, though, is that people are not willing to have difficult conversations yes. with their friends. Yes. It's mm. important, it is important to have difficult conversations. And Lydia has shown me that it's possible yes. to have difficult conversations mm. and it's not mean that being the end of your friendship yeah. but people are not willing yes. you'll give your man a million chances but your friend you just yeah. ghost slowly <laughs> yes. and that's it Horrible. yeah friendship is mm. important i kind of feel like when people are talking to me about you that's why i brought up uh, diana rose i feel like mm. you are diana rose to so many beyonces mm. True story, true story. Mm-hmm. Like take it, true story. Yeah. You know, people have a choice not to say or talk about you. Mm. But if I always say, if someone is talking about someone, especially in the public eye, yeah. then they sometimes they really do mean what they are saying. You I'm know? glad. Yeah. I'm really glad. I I feel like I want at the end of my one day, let's say when I've stopped being on Instagram or stop being a celeb or mm. whatever, I want it to be, to, to be felt that I gave yes. an impact. And sometimes impact is not a big thing at any make to me a 100K. Sometimes it's just sending an encouraging message mm. when someone is feeling down. Sometimes mm. it's just saying, I feel you, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Sometimes it's even just connecting someone to someone like, mm. oh, I saw you're looking for a, you know, a, a house, a, a yes. studio or something like that. Here's a friend of mine who mm. has a studio. Mm. I really try to pay things forward Good. because people also do a lot of things for me yes. and I'm so grateful. I'm Good. so grateful. So mm. I always try to like, how can we make other people's lives better? Especially women. Especially. I have nothing against men, but women really, we have been, we, sometimes we are just dealt such a, a no, difficult no, hand. Man. So I really do my best to support mm. women as much as I can. Mm. Mm. But I see you are very much involved with women's subjects and stuff, mm. but there are people who have labeled you a couple of names, you mm. know, that whole combination, radical feminist, toxic feminist, mm. this and this and this and this. How, how <coughs> do you respond to such things? I, I would say that Mm, radical feminists. God, mm. me, I hardly ever even talk about it, anything. Okay, mm. I feel like sometimes when people go on TMI, sometimes they get the vibe at it's like we are anti-men. Mm. Even though we love men, and especially they are, they are supporting factors. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. We love men. We love men so much. <laughs> it's just that, unfortunately, in my line of work, I interact with people every day all day mm. i get dms from so many people and especially women i guess just mostly because more women are active online but yeah. also more, more, mostly it's women who follow me mm. but every day it is different messages somebody in an abusive relationship somebody who their baby daddy has left them somebody who is you know being cheated on yes. somebody who i'm just constantly seeing how much women go through and sometimes by the way it's not even the man's fault mm. sometimes it's like even you what, can you stand what, up what stand up doing? yeah stand up and even you make a, a decision you say mm. something like oh my husband has said i can't work he has said he's even taken all the money he said i can't go to the gynecologist i'm like so now he has said so you have just stopped going what do you mean 
what do you mean now he has said? You know, even you, I, I just really need for women to be more empowered. I wouldn't say I'm a rad radical or toxic feminist at all mm -hmm. because I definitely believe that men have value, women have value. But the reality is that women have suffered more. Mm -hmm. And in African culture, in African societies, women continue to suffer. Do you know, it's just the other day that women started being allowed to, to uh, get land or something like that or mm -hmm. to register anything without at having your husband. It's literally, we are still just fresh from whatever fight it was for mm. women to have an equal seat at the table. Mm -hmm. It's factual. Mm. Research has shown women will earn less than a man at a certain job. Doing the same thing. Doing the exact same mm. thing. They will earn less. You can't fight with facts. Mm. Those are just like, it's just facts, mm. you know? You can't fight with that. So yeah. for me, I'm really interested in just helping women have an equal seat at the table. Letting them know that you have a choice. Mm. That's the, the thing that makes me saddest is when someone messages me and just tells me, oh, you know, now at, at, this guy is abusive, mm. but I don't have money, so I can't leave. Yes. I don't have a choice. You always have a choice. Mm. And can we stop getting in? Come we stays where you have no money? You see, because that is just the, the beginning and the end of it all. And this is why I don't advocate for people to move in with people before they get married. Kila mtu yishi tu kwa nyumbayake. Muende sleepover, Two, three days, you go back Urudi home. Kwa kwa. I love you. Two, three days, Urudi you go. That's the thing. Mm. Because I don't understand what is the rush to move in together. And then now it's been 10 years and he's like, oh, he doesn't want to get married and what. But he's now we have what? Uh, 10 no. years. I'm we are selling, you know, women are selling themselves short mm. and I just need more of them to realize how empowered they can be. And yeah. so they can then empower others. Yeah. I really would love to get into more, um, spaces where beyond just conversation which you like the kind we have on tmi mm. is doing actual things having an actual organization that helps women especially vulnerable women especially women who are in situations where they feel like they have no choice mm. and to show them that you always have a choice mm. you always have that's a choice that's nice that's one mm. of your future projects definitely and one of my future projects ah, yeah, projects yeah i, I love the rhino foundation yeah you are rhino yeah yes. there you go mm. nice but as we wind up mm. how does the future look like for Murugi? First of all, no more children. I'm so glad that the phase of my life for having kids in Meisha. Because let me tell you something, as a woman, when you're having children, you know, you, it's almost like you pause your everything life. else in your life for like two years. The one year that you're pregnant, the other year when your mtoi wow. is not yet reached one. It is, it is, it's been a lot of sacrifice. And even though, even for me, during those times, I've still had some kind of movement and freedom. It's mm. not the same as mm. like when you're like, now I'm in my building season. Yeah. And I really feel like right now I am in my building season. Mm. I am um, doing as much work as I possibly can to be able to grow my wealth. I am trying to grow my platform. I want to grow TMI. I want to grow wild. I want to expand wow. my portfolio. You know, um, my husband and I are building a home. Wow. Um, and we are, thank you. We are so excited about that. That, yes. um and to meanza too wow. uh, juicy that's so beautiful. that's going to be yeah occupying us for the next maybe one year or so mm. but we are really in that building phase or we want to just set ourselves up for yes. the future you know a lot of people of our generation i realize don't think that much about what's going to happen when they retire or what's going to happen when they i don't know when you stop earning from that job that you mm. have you know um and i want to um I don't want to be one of those people. I want to be one of the people who is just like, I had thought through, where is my cash coming from when I retire? Where, what bonds have I invested yes. in? What, where have I saved? What, you know, those kinds of things. I want mm. to just make sure that I'm not going to be a burden to my children in the future. Um, so yeah, right now I just want to focus on, on growing. Yes. Slowly by slowly by slowly, mm. you know, getting, uh, being content also with where we are. Um, my husband and I are really yeah. big on that. It's Love like we, we content. Yeah, content. Yeah, we are. We, we want. We like to emphasize gratitude to our children because kids these days they are so spoiled. You mm. bring a toy today, tomorrow it's like so now and today a toy for today and tell them be content, be grateful for what you have. To you know, yeah. To lieni, <laughs> my day. So we try to. I want to really be look around me and even yeah. as I work, even as I build, even is as I um strive for you know better. I want to really take time mm. in my life right now to also just be grateful for where I am, the businesses I've built, the podcast I have, the, the, my family, That's you beautiful. know, my platform, my voice, you know, my beauty, my yes. body, everything about where I am right now is beautiful, is an answered prayer mm. actually to me right now. Yeah. So I, I mean, I just want to take time as much as possible to appreciate that even as I plan for, you know, growing in the future. Yeah. Also maybe opening that foundation That's that I told beautiful. you about. I'm thinking I might expand to kids' clothes as well because parents, I'm always importing Kinamukeni's clothes. Please. People are always like, where did you get this? 
is it to short? Is it That's to a whatever? good idea. It's a very good idea. I'll yes. wait a while kids. Because when I coming. came to mm. shop, if there mm. was anything for the kids, I would easily grab exactly. that. Exactly. And let me tell you, it doesn't matter how many clothes your kids have. Yeah. When you see something cute, you, you want will to buy. buy it. You must buy that, it. That's go the go thing. for that. that. That's a beautiful I know, yeah. Yes. Apple, I want to come and I'm going to a dog. Yes. And then I have some little models who can model for me. Yes. 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 Good. Yeah. We will pay in juice box. Na crepes. That's it. Ah, you know now you gotta start secret. paying your kids for using them as content oh, creators. Right, it's had. coming. It's coming. Me, I was like, you people relax. First of all, the money we are earning needs to pay your own school fees. Hey, so they did not sign up uh, for their face everywhere. <laughs> They did not. No, but that's not, I think I've really enjoyed this conversation. I really been, have too. It's been raw, it's been authentic, it's been beautiful. Thank it's you. It's just how I imagined Yeah, there are some be. things I've spoken about here which I have literally never even spoken about really? on my on my platform. Yeah. But I think you have a really, you have an, an energy of, of ah. safety. Oh. You know, the kind where, because sometimes you go for interviews and it's like someone is just trying to get that corner part. you and trying to finilia yeah. you and it's like you don't even feel comfortable to say anything. Mm. But you really have a very welcoming, very oh. open energy. And I appreciate yeah. Oh, see, you're just a girl's girl, you know. I appreciate that. Yeah. But before we wind up, mm -hmm. is there anything that you feel we left out that you want to touch briefly on? Um, no, I think you covered everything. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's a long conversation. Really? But I'm so glad that I actually came. Because yeah. yesterday now, I spent the whole day in bed. Then I was like, if I spend the whole day in... You know how sometimes when you're sick, but if you just stay at home, you'll just feel sicker. You become more sicker. That's the thing. I was yes. like, let me just come outside and yeah. just see the world. I breathe yeah. someone else's air. But I mm. hope you see go check. No, worries. You know why we can't? We can't. So. No, we, can. we can't. But yeah. thank you for coming. You, you are just so incredible. Thank you. I mean, thank you so I, much. for me... You say this is a safe space. For me, safety is knowing that a woman can look up to another woman mm. and feel confident about themselves, feel like they can do it, feel like this woman always has our back. Mm. To me, that's actually my take home. I really looked forward to interviewing you, especially because of that. Thank you. Because of that. Because mm. people, how they speak about you behind the scene, mm. you sh one day should just record and send it your way. It's beautiful. <sighs> and you know, they say really sometimes people can say things to you because you're here, but mm. it's it's what people say in your absence in your that really matters. 100%, and they are yeah. saying beautiful things about you. you. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it. You know, Thank may you. God open doors for you. Mm -hmm. May your home become. May you whatever face it is that you're going through in your life right now, mm -hmm. may it be followed by success after success after success. Mm -hmm. May young girls look at you and just know that if Murugi did it, mm -hmm. we can. You know, Absolutely. if Murugi did it, then we That's can. Mm -hmm. You know, but if I let you go without a parting shot especially to the in-between us. Mm. Personally, I know where to find you. On yes. YouTube, it's TMI. Exactly. Yes, Instagram is Murugi Muni. Yes. You so, yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> nah, I was ah, going yeah. there, but... Uh, yes. Yes. So, on Instagram, you can find me as murugi.muni. Mm. Um, you can find me on threads as well, on yeah. Twitter, on... Even on YouTube, I'm there. You yes. can watch my old videos, but niliacha hii mambo ya YouTube. Nimewachia kina lean. Yes, yeah. you can also follow my our podcast, TMI Podcast, mm -hmm. KE everywhere yeah. um and also follow my business wild by murugi that's yes. wild dot by murugi mm. on instagram website coming very soon yes. and we are based at greenhouse mall gong road ground floor Flo yes yes i that's love that i me. came you know I, I i was telling them about your outfits and i even mm. told this is not a paid ad i've not been paid to talk okay. to you about these outfits mm. but they is just so beautiful oh, i felt you. really comfortable I'm gl and that's and the I, thing you want yes. you can want to look good and but feel, also to feel comfortable and feel comfortable it, too yeah. you know so mm. i can't wait to wear the rest I guys we will talk up for come on in my fun yes but was I your I hair like this no 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 what was no i had uh it was straight kidogo Right. Yes, 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 I think it was a bit longer. Yes, hey, no, it's you now know, it may shrink, Sasa. You can't really know how somebody looks in real life. Nah, okay, honestly. Nah, until I speak, but thank you for coming. <gasps> thank you. You know, so what mm. would be your parting shot to the in between us mm. and the rest of the people that are watching this conversation? Um, I would say that uh first of all, you are only as powerful as you think that you are. If you think you can build a multi-million dollar business, you can. If you think that you can't, you also so right you are a hundred percent right if you think you have no choice and that's why you're staying in an unhappy marriage or an unhappy relationship then you will have no choice mm. but if you realize that you need to make a way for you to get out of there you will find a way by the way everything is about mindset yeah. don't 
um, get into a situation where you feel like someone else has more power over your own life than you because one of the best things about being an adult i'm always telling people is that you can literally do whatever you want mm. do you realize that you can being an adult you can do anything you anything. want actually of course some things will land you in prison mm. and other things but literally as an adult you can do anything you want yeah so if anyone has made you feel like you can't that you can't make a certain decision you can't leave a relationship you can't make a you know get a certain job or whatever do not let other people be in charge of your life of your destiny mm. of your future make a stand and you be in charge of yes. that future good yeah and your kids will watch this someday in the future oh, what, would you, <laughs> yeah, what what would you i feel like you love it and music because he's ah, even i guess so yes ah, you know but, but what, even when <laughs> in Nairobi, so in so that i love them all yeah. 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 Don't see what, eh? <laughs> but what would you want your kids to know about their mom um i pray that but if they are ever watching this, I pray that I have continued to raise you in the best way possible. I pray that you always know that you are loved, you are important, you are special, and that there is literally, literally no other human being on this earth who is like you. Mm. Um, I guess I would also want them to know that we've really done our best. I'm always saying that for me, I would, I would want for in 20 years, my kids to not be in therapy. But one thing I've realized somehow your kids will end up in therapy yeah. research has shown you love your kids too much they therapy. may end up in therapy because now they can't find any other man who loves them like them yes. and then now they have a high standard for judging other people mm. you don't love them enough they're again still they're still in therapy, therapy. Yes. and then the fact that right now the age that we are raising our kids in is is really difficult like on social media they can see things yes. they have access they to TikTok. so much information what six year olds know about sex yes know about crushes know about gee this is my boyfriend or whatever whereas you by the time you are like 15 the sound of your yeah. so i hope you have grown up to be very good kids mm. and if you have not <laughs> finally to zach oh now you want me to start blushing here. Hey, it's you, you see, he will feel nice. She's still blushing yeah, over me years later, you know. Babe, if you're watching this, I love you. I'm sorry I spoke about you a bit. You know, he didn't like when I speak about him that yeah. much. But I'm sorry I spoke about you a bit. But it's only because you're literally my heart and soul. Yeah. I appreciate everything you do for me, for the children. Um, and I look forward to building a really, really long and beautiful and happy and healthy life with mm. you. Yeah. Full of friendship and Full good vibes. Friendship and love and, and great love. things. Yeah. Yes. Muzeke pamoja. Ah, Wrinkles is pamoja. Pamoja. Yeah. Marriage, you pamoja. Yeah. Marriage, my mom always says, is mm. like, literally, it's a life or death yeah. decision. Who you marry is a life or death decision. Yes. I feel so sad when I see somebody's like they've gotten married because um, I got pregnant or, you know, my mom said this was the best person. If you realize how crucial who your, your uh, choice of partner is to you, yes. to your destiny, mm. to your future, to what your children grow up to be like, to how your life ends up panning out, people would take that decision to get married so much more seriously. Mm. Like, please think through it. It's not a must just because you've gotten married, you've gotten a baby. It's not a must to get married. Just because you've been dating 10 years, does not, it's not a must to get married, mm. imagine. People need to think through that decision so much deeper. Yeah. But so much more. It's so much more. Yeah. Two things that determine <coughs> how your life ends up. The day you find out when why you were born, that's the purpose, and who mm. you decide to marry. And who you absolutely. Those two things, man, they decide they the trajectory make of or break you. you. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. So I'm gonna let you go, hey, even for just you. being here early, dropping the kids and just Thank coming you. here. Yeah. The makeup was making up. <laughs> it has made <laughs> the makeup up. has made up uh -huh. yes and also go say hi to your people for us even I on mean. your podcast mm -hmm. i'm really vouching for your podcast those conversations keep them coming mm -hmm. have people let them talk to us there are things even on this show sometimes it's really hard to cover so when i mm -hmm. see other women are doing it i say it takes a whole village mm -hmm. it takes the whole community really for does. us to be able mm -hmm. to put uh, those discussion so bye from my people's colonel <laughs> <laughs> it's been MVP, a, yeah, Leo, 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 she's the MVP of this episode. <laughs> you know, to my incredible team for making this happen. You see now.
wonder why these episodes take long. Honestly, now you much. know, right? It's but okay. anyways, Asante sana. Mm-hmm. Allow me to let you go. And also, Thank guys, you. back at home, I want to know what your take home has been from today's conversation. For me, it's always take time to really know someone. Mm-hmm. I know we are tempted to say this and this and this about someone, but can we just be invested mm-hmm. in finding out who really this person is? Can we be kind with our words? Can we have no fear? Can we not fear wealth? Can we not fear being great? You know, can we get married for the right reasons? Mm-hmm. You know, can we have friendships that matter? For me, the take homes are just so many points mm-hmm. here. But I want to know what yours is on the comment section. And of course, guys, I always say it takes a lot to put content out here. I know some people just see it as YouTube, but there's a whole team that works behind this worker, and it takes a lot to keep a company together. So when we find great partners working with us, such as Kings Our Properties Limited, I love the love. I feel like now this is the home of that real estate company. But please do check out Vintage Apartments. It's a classic evolution for me. Great views. There is no that. So if you are looking for an apartment, a two-bedroom apartment with great amenities, they pay really attention to the finishing. The product is amazing. I saw certified. They are working closely with great people. So if you want to get something, visit them at Prism Towers. They also own Prism Towers, by the way, guys. Go off to fifth floor and tell them Kings Limited. I have this. They have flexible payment plans. So, usikazane sana, you know. And also to thank you guys. Guys, 700k subscribers, here we come. So this has been a dream. Like, yeah, I know, man. This has been a dream. So, asante ni sana. I know we are going to end up the year, God willingly, with great energy, great content. Asante ni sana. And also, let me know, who else would you want to watch on Rebuilding Series? Or oh, Building Series have been challenged. We are rebuilding and building. We keep learning. Sinisawa so if you are building holla at us if you are rebuilding also let us know info at lnn.digital that's where i'm at asante nisana may god keep you may he see you through and may your dreams come true see you tomorrow at 10 a.m bye bye okay